Alright, today we'll be talking about Kagura. Kagura is a creation of Naraku, his second incarnation, although she is introduced before her older sister, Kana. A wind sorceress, Kagura uses a fan to enhance her powers. She can create a blade-like tornado or use wind to animate dead bodies. She can also use her feather hair ornaments as transportation, enlarging them to ride in the wind. Kagura hates Naraku and wishes to be free from him, conveniently opposing him to the point of offering aid to both Inuyasha and Shishomaru, in hopes that they can kill him. After Kohaku's memories return, Kagura becomes increasingly protective of the boy. She shares information with him about Naraku's weaknesses. She thwarts her fellow detachment Hakudoshi from taking the Shikon shard that keeps Kohaku alive. Finally, she openly defies Naraku by helping Kohaku escape. Naraku mockingly returns her heart before fatally wounding her and leaving her to die. While tracking Naraku, Shishomaru finds her dying. She seems happy to see him, although his sword, Tensega, cannot save her. Inuyasha's group also arrives, helplessly watching her body dissolve into the wind. Afterwards, Inuyasha asks if she suffered. Shishomaru replies that she was smiling when she died. In the anime adaption, she dies the very same way. Kagura is one of many of Naraku's incarnations, and as such, he holds her heart in his hands. She is bound to his service. Her betrayal would mean certain death. Despite such impediment, she resents Naraku and conveniently works toward his death, mostly by manipulating the two camps opposed to Naraku, those of Inuyasha and Shishomaru. She has an older sister who appears younger named Kana, who is loyal to Naraku. She also has other younger siblings, Jiromaru, Kagiyomaru, Goshinki, Muzo, and Hakudoshi, as well as Naraku's other incarnations. Sometime afterwards, Naraku became careless about his miasma and allowed it to fill the inside of his barrier and kill the Hitomi clan retainers. This caused a weakness in Naraku's barrier that Kogan and Yasha could soon detect. They began sniffing out his scent. Kagura left the castle to attack Koga. She obtained his two jewel shards but decided to use them as a bribe to have Shishomaru kill Naraku instead. Shishomaru declined and said to use them herself. Kagura soon attacked Koga and Inuyasha. For a brief moment upon arriving, she noticed Inuyasha's human form and realized he was a half-demon. At the same time, Naraku detected that Kagura had left the castle thanks to Kana's mirror. He sent demons to rescue Kagura. During the battle, Kagura was about to be blasted by the Windscar when she was saved by Naraku's demons at the last moment. Kagura whisked herself away back to Naraku's castle. Kana leads her down to the sub-basement. Naraku pulled her down by force and revealed that he knew she had left the castle. After he threatened to reabsorb her, Naraku gave Kagura one last chance to be obedient. He chained her up in the dungeon as punishment. However, Kagura decided not to tell him about Inuyasha becoming human on the night of the new moon. Later, Kagura was approached by Naraku again. She once again promised complete devotion to him if he would free her from the prison. Naraku explained he had released Muzo, another incarnation. Naraku ordered Kagura to track him and lead him to Inuyasha. Upon arriving, she found Inuyasha had unleashed his Kaze no Kizu and was about to destroy Muzo. She quickly used her own blades to divert the attack and save Muzo. Muzo had the memory of Kikyo, but he thought that Kagome Higurashi was the one because they looked the same. Naraku attempted to reabsorb Muzo but was rejected at first. Inuyasha arrived and distracted Naraku long enough for Muzo to escape. Kagura grew intrigued by Muzo as he openly defied Naraku and was not under his control. She became interested in learning this ability as well as she still longed to be free from his control. However, before she could learn the skill, she saw him be reabsorbed into Naraku. She worried this would be her fate if she were to defy him again. Naraku lured Shishomaru to his castle in an attempt to absorb him. At the same time, he had led Inuyasha and his crew to the castle as well. Upon arriving at the barrier's wall, Inuyasha destroyed the barrier with his new red Tensaiga. 
Naraku was in the middle of his battle with Shishamaru when he sent Inuyasha's newfound power. He sent Kagura to stop Inuyasha while he dealt with Shishamaru. However, Kagura still yearned for her freedom from Naraku. She barely put up a fight to stop Inuyasha and instead allowed him to pass in order for him to destroy her master in tandem with Shishamaru. When Naraku was believed to have been destroyed, Kagura could feel her heart had returned. Kagura explained that she was now free, but Kana claimed that her wish for freedom would soon come true. She led Kagura to a shrine with the mirror that Kaguya was imprisoned in. She used her own mirror to awaken Kaguya. Kagura was promised true freedom from Kaguya if she helped her escape from the mirror. She and Kana went off to find the five treasures that were needed to set Kaguya free. They obtained the jeweled branch of Horai, the jewel of the dragon's neck, before confronting Inuyasha to obtain his robe of the fire rat. Inuyasha initially believed that Kagura was looking to avenge Naraku's death, but Kagura disputed that notion. She was able to slice Inuyasha's left sleeve off his robe with her dance of blades. Inuyasha tried to fight back, but Kana used Kaguya's mirror to create a black hole that reflected his bakuria. Inuyasha was saved after Kagome used her sick command on him so he could dodge the attack. Kagura asked Kaguya if she could kill Inuyasha, but she stated that it was not necessary since they already got what they needed from him. Kagura confronted Songo at her village in order to obtain the swallow cowry shell that was in possession of her brother, Kohaku. Kagura spared them as he gave her what she wanted but Songo asked Kohaku to get Hiraiko. Kagura used her Dance of the Dragon to disorient Kohaku long enough for her to take the treasure from him and flee. During her search for the stone-begging bowl of Buddha, Kagura confronted Kikio. After revealing to Kikio that Naraku was dead, Kagura was presented with the bowl from her, much to Kagura's shock. After Kikio walked away, Kagura felt indebted for obtaining the last sacred treasure, although, from her, she found the priestess to be creepy. This led to the release of Kaguya. Kagura soon learned from Kana that Kaguya was actually a demon that devoured the real celestial being. Kaguya was soon confronted by the two of him and her castle. Kana attempted to use her mirror to absorb Kaguya's soul, but was unsuccessful due to Kaguya in possession of the celestial robe. She used her powers to banish Kagura and Kana from the castle and cause them to plunge deep below a huge body of water. It was later revealed Kagura being set free was all part of Naraku's trap so he could absorb Kagura and her powers, but she was able to repel him with her mirror. Inuyasha and Kagome were able to destroy Kagura's body, and her essence was sucked into Naraku's wind tunnel. Naraku fled to Mount Hakure after his battle with Inuyasha and Shishamaru. Kagura was tasked with guarding Naraku deep inside the mountain while he was creating a new body for himself. She encountered Moroku and Songo while they were exploring the mountain. Kagura and an army of demons attacked them, but were unable to kill them due to the purifying powers of the mountain. As Mount Hakure began to collapse due to Naraku's transformation, Kagura escaped while carrying Naraku's newest incarnation. She was spotted by Kikyo as she fled. Kikyo attempted to kill her with her arrow. Kagura was about to fight back, but she was stopped by the infant she was carrying, much to her surprise. The infant told Kagura that she was not the one who should kill Kikyo. After the destruction of Mount Hakure, Kagura was tasked with accompanying the infant. She possessed a priest with her Dance of the Dead to lure Inuyasha away from his friends by having the priest say that Kikyo survived her fight with Naraku. This was done to lure him away while the infant attempted to possess Kagome to use her powers to locate the final shard of the Sheikh on the Tama. Their attempts failed as Kagome was able to escape the control of the infant. When Naraku discovered that the last jewel shard was located at the border of the afterlife, Kagura and the infant began killing monks and priests in hopes of finding a way to enter the border. After encountering a powerful monk, the infant's body was split in half. Kagura took the infant's remains to Kana. She took the left half and told Kagura to watch over the right half. 
Soon, the half that Kagura was given began to grow until it became Hakudoshi. She continued to accompany Hakudoshi in his quest to find the path to the border of the next life. Hakudoshi ordered Kagura to tell Inuyasha about the Realm of Fire and to follow him there. Kagura saw that the entrance to the border to the next world would mean instant death. When the guardians of the gate asked her if she wished to pass through the gate, she said no, and the gate closed immediately. Kagura realized that Hakudoshi was using her to see if the gate was safe for him to use. She yelled at him for treating her life as a toy and attacked him. She soon suffered afterwards when Naraku grasped her heart for her actions against Hakudoshi. After Inuyasha and Naraku were able to travel to the border safely by using the phoenix demon Tenkei's blood, she approached Shishomaru and told him of what transpired, and also of the existence of the other gate to the border in the Realm of Fire. Shishomaru was able to pass through the gate safely because he had Tensega. As Kagura witnesses, she confirmed her belief that Shishomaru was powerful enough to kill Naraku and help her achieve her freedom. Naraku later stole the Fuyoheki from Gakusanjin while he was asleep. The cause the parasites that were using his body as a nest to spread across the area and possess another demon. Naraku ordered Kagura and Kohaku to exterminate them. Kagura later went off on her own and came across Gaku Saijin and Inuyasha's group. She heard from Gaku Saijin about how Naraku stole the Fuyoheki. She realized that he did it in order to hide the infant Yoki since it was his heart. She obtained a piece of Gaku Saijin's crystallized Yoki that he left behind for Inuyasha's group to use to find the Fuyoheki. She later gave it to Shishomaru. Naraku charges her with her final job, which is to guard Goryomaru at prison. Hakudoshi convinces her to release him secretly because he is secretly plotting with the infant to destroy Naraku. Hakudoshi is later killed by the wind tunnel, thanks to Naraku withdrawing the Sanyosho. Fearing for her life, Kagura fled to spend whatever time she has left to herself. Suspiciously, Naraku appears and grants Kagura her freedom, but with a fatal catch. Naraku returns Kagura's heart, but pierces her chest and poisons her with his miasma. Though she is found by Shishomaru, whom she had been hinted to have romantic interest in, he was unable to use Tensega to save her life, and she succumbs to the poison. At the moment of her death, Kagura's body disintegrates and becomes a gust of wind. Her last thoughts are that she was happy that she could see Shishomaru before she died, and that she was free as the wind. Shishomaru stayed and watched Kagura's body vanishing right in front of him, and Inuyasha's group arrived just in that moment, seeing Kagura dying too. Inuyasha asked Shishomaru if Kagura was suffering much as she died poisoned by Naraku's miasma. With his back turned to his own brother and his friends, Shishomaru gazed towards the sky and tells his half-brother that Kagura was smiling in the moment of her death before he slowly walks away from the scene. In this moment, a breeze blows above Inuyasha's group and Shishomaru, and a voice can be heard saying, I am the wind, the free wind. Being an incarnation, Kagura shares some similarities to Naraku. She uses other people for her own purposes. Often, ironically, her purpose being to kill Naraku himself. This is seen at various times when she lets Inuyasha escape, keeping him alive in hope that he can kill Naraku at some point in the future. She asks Shishomaru for help in slaying Naraku as well, and even steals Koga's shards at one point with the intent of killing Naraku herself with the power of the shards to aid her. In the story, she is mostly shown as inhospitable, calculating, and shrewd. She lets the events in the story occur towards her favor not caring about the other people's well-being, just rising towards her goal to destroy Naraku in order to be free as the wind. She is a keen observer and does not like to lose because of her confidence and her abilities, shown when Inuyasha uses his Kaze no Kizu and temporarily defeats her. Kagura does not like to be manipulated. When Naraku first sends her to kill Koga's comrades, she's almost killed by Inuyasha's windscar. She is furious when he would deceive her in such a way. Also, when Hakudoshi sends her to the gate guarded by Gozu and Meizu and is almost turned to stone, she attempts to kill him for playing with her life, to which Naraku responds by squeezing her heart. Most of all, 
Kagura wishes to be free of Naraku's hold, to have her heart return to her and be the wind. While appearing as quite an attractive young human woman, Kagura has a few features that suggest she is something different. Her eyes are strikingly red and her ears are pointed. There are a few times she was seen without her clothes, revealing she bears the same spider-shaped burn scar as her master, Naraku. She wears two white feathers in her hair that she pulls and casts upward as described in Plume Transformation below in order to escape or make a dramatic exit. I will name all of her outfits. Dancer Kimono, Kisode, um, her being barefooted, and an obi, earring, which is all the clothing she wears. And of course, I will name all of her abilities. Aerokinesis, reanimation, enhanced agility, reflexes, immortality, enhanced durability, and immense endurance. And of course, her weapons. Traditional dance fan, dance of the blade, dance of the dragon, wind gust, dance of the dead, feather plume, enlargement, and transportation. Despite being created from Naraku's flesh, Kagura has great resentment towards her creator. Her, fish, her first mission after creation was to take Koga's Shikone Jewel Sharp and to kill Inuyasha. However, she nearly died by the Wind Scar, something that prompted her to attack him in vengeance. Naraku nearly kills her by squeezing her heart, which forced Kagura back into servitude to him. Wanting nothing more than to be free as the wind as she commands, Kagura sought out any possible means to kill Naraku. However, he is more or less aware of her schemes. Eventually, he tires of Kagura and returns her heart, then injects miasma into her to ensure a short and painful freedom. Although never stated, it is possible that Kagura and Kana are very close, as Kagura never had any ill thoughts about Kana. She did, however, have negative thoughts about Goshinki, Muzo, the infant, and especially of Hakudoshi. Kana and Kagura's possible closeness is supported in the second movie, in that even after Naraku's death, they remain together as opposed to parting ways after they both have their freedom. It is possible that Kagura's betrayal and death inspired Kana to betray Naraku, given the slight sadness she expressed when she realized her younger sister had died. Kagura's death may have also caused Kana to question her existence. They are the first incarnations of Naraku, and both of them live the longest compared to all the other incarnations of the series, many of which are killed after their first encounter with Inuyasha and his friends. After being charged with caring for the first infant, Kagura soon learned that she had to take him more seriously. She hated having to take care of him, but was overjoyed when a priest managed to split him in half. However, he quickly regrew from his right half. Kagura then had to put up with being ordered around by him, becoming greatly resentful, especially when he used her to test the gate of the borderland and nearly got turned to stone. She was willing to team up with both of Hakudoshi if meant getting her heart back from Naraku. However, she later regretted the idea and was happy to see him sucked into Moroku's wind tunnel. As the both of them are Naraku's tools, Kagura was often charged with retrieving him after a failed mission. Following the return of Koaku's memories, Kagura believes she found a useful tool of her own, willing to use him to kill Naraku. To this end, she gave him a shard of demonic energy to find the Fuyoheki. However, when she teamed up with Hakudoshi and needed to take his shard, Kagura decides to let Kohaku go, part of it presumably due to not wanting him to share the same fate, of being a pawn and never found his own freedom, as hers, showing she had become protective of him. When they initially met, they were strangers, but as time went on, Kagura believed that Shishomaru might free her from Naraku's grasp due to his great power. Therefore, she would search for Shishomaru many times and try to convince him to help her kill Naraku. However, Shishomaru would always refuse. Over time, she even developed feelings for Shishomaru. Rin believed that Kagura may be in love with Shishomaru, but it is never clearly stated. They were the same, both loyal to only themselves. Even though Kagura was forced to work for Naraku, she was often brooding about how to kill him and cold towards almost everybody else, including some if not all of their families. 
In the anime, as she died, Shishamaru stops his fight with Moriyomaru to find Kagura in a field of flowers, intending to save her with the Ten Sega. In the manga, he was pursuing Naraku's smell before Naraku fatally wounded Kagura. However, it was too late for her to be saved, most likely because she needed a mostly intact body and hers was disintegrating. Kagura stated that she was happy she got to see him one last time before she died. It was implied she had romantic feelings for Shishomaru. Kagura generally views Inuyasha as a pest and is always reluctant in helping him in any way. When she has to face Inuyasha, she never holds back, but she does toy with him and wants to make sure he is in pain. Nonetheless, she does try to aid Inuyasha and his friends whenever she cannot contact Shishomaru. And later in the series, Inuyasha tends to worry about Kagura and her fate. As seen in the final act, he warns Kagura not to die before they can kill Naraku and collect her heart. In the 23rd volume, when ordered by Naraku to stop Inuyasha from entering his castle while he absorbs Shishomaru, she only pretends to fight, saying, I must at least make a pretense of fighting you. Inuyasha notices that her win has nothing in it, but quickly dismisses it to fight Naraku. Shortly before her death, Inuyasha extended an offer for her to join his team, but Kagura rejected the offer as they had been enemies for far too long. In the anime, Kagura's personality is explored in slightly more detail than it is in the manga. She makes her first appearance in Volume 15, but she has no thoughts of betraying Naraku until Volume 21, when she offers Shishomaru shards of the Sacred Jewel in return for killing Naraku. In the anime, however, she begins to plot for her freedom immediately after her first encounter with Koga and Inuyasha, when she tricked them into fighting each other and is almost killed, then attacking Naraku out of anger for not being told about the power of Inuyasha's Tensaiga. In the manga, she waits for a moment after she is attacked by Inuyasha's Kaze no Kizu for the first time. She is seen with a wound that runs down her chest from her shoulder. She uses her feather to leave and declares that their fight will end in a draw this time since they are both injured. In the anime, she uses her feather to escape while she is attacked by Inuyasha's Kaze no Kizu and does not have any visible injuries on her. In the manga, she gives Gaku Saijin's crystallized yoki to Shishomaru before she encounters Goryomaru. In the anime, she gives it to Shishomaru after she is blasted away by Goryomaru. In the anime, Kagura killed the Hikokon with her Fuyo no Mai. In the anime, it was killed by Kohaku. In the manga, Shishomaru does not battle Moriyomaru before Kagura's death. The battle with Moriyomaru happens after Kagura's death. Episode 2 of the final act is from about 14 different chapters from volumes 38, 39, and 41 out of order. I will do all of her quotes. If a man loses his head, I'll put it back on. If he is cut down to size, he can still tag along. He is simply dancing my undead dance song. Shall we take Inuyasha's head along with us as a trophy? You admit to deceiving me, then. You audacious fool! Naraku holds my life in his hands, but I have no intention of remaining a servant forever to the likes of him. I am the wind. One day, I shall be free. So, Naraku's greatest obstacle is still alive, huh? This is starting to get interesting. Even the moon has times when it can hide in darkness. With Naraku holding onto my heart, there is nowhere for me to run. And of course, her conversation with Joggin, which is very fucking short. Yo, yo yourself, <laughs> which is what Joggin said to her when she, you know, talked to her. <laughs> I knew it. Shishoma is the only one who can kill Naraku. Are you throwing that weapon at me? I am the wind, remember? It's all right now. I was able to see you one last time. I am the wind. The free win. In the Holy Pearl, Kagura was renamed as Hu Jin. Kagura appears on the cover of the volume she dies in, just like Hana would in volume 49. Hakudoshi appears on the back cover, having died in the same volume. Her death was similar to Sara Asano. Both of their bodies disappeared while in the presence of Shishomaru. Sara expressed her love for him, while Kagura only had thoughts of him. So yeah, that's all about Kagura, and on Sunday the 13th, 
I will talk about Midorico. So look forward to that, and I'll see you guys. Bye!